50% of your day is too much. We're not in the conversation with you. Do you want me to spray it? She need to be hosed down? Probably. Because... All right. All right, hot dog dude. I think we only have like five gallons in the fridge, my butt. That what? Hose water. <laughs> I got you. I got my seat. Goldie is a giver. Each morning we milk about three gallons from this gorgeous creature and then put a calf on her who nurses about another entire gallon. Goldie! There we go. You are moving slow, girl. So the most common question I get as I share daily filter gallon after gallon is what are you going to do with it? We're not selling it, sorry to say. That's an endeavor for another season. But my aim is to always make the most out of what we get. I'm gonna show you everything I made this week from 18 gallons of raw milk. I'll milk the cow, you make the things. Deal? Deal. It did feel like a very natural spot to clink. This is not one of the things included on the list, but lattes. It's not on the list? No. How is lattes but now not it on is. the list? Now That's it the whole is, thing. now it is. If you've been here for even a minute, you know that we are making lattes on lattes on lattes over here. Some days between me and Bo, we're drinking a quart of milk just on our coffee. So it's safe to say that with Goldie stocking our fridge, Starbucks has nothing on us. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Actually, on Wednesdays, we make yogurt. But bonus if you share the movie reference in the comments because Bo doesn't believe that anyone will get it. I add a gallon to my Instant Pot and set it for 20 hours until I get a wobbly consistency in my yogurt and I strain it to resemble something more like Greek yogurt. Cherry pie filling added to it is an instant easy flavor and then sometimes it's just vanilla with maple syrup. And then recently I tried to recreate a childhood favorite with espresso shots and making this rich, creamy, full flavored coffee yogurt. I also leave some plain and we'll use that in recipes like biscuits or toppings on tacos. There are so many things I haven't even tried making with our milk just yet. But the most basic thing that we have noticed is no matter how many bricks we stack atop our children's heads, we cannot keep them from growing. Our family of seven consumes about eight gallons of milk a week, even more if someone turns it into chocolate milk. In complete transparency, cheese is not my skill, yet. I remember the first time I hand pulled mozzarella with a group of my homesteader friends in North Carolina. We made cheese sticks and my life was forever changed. If you love these people as much as I do, stay tuned in the next few weeks. I'm going to go celebrate Meg and stay with these wonderful women who fill my soul and I will share a video diary of this trip coming up soon. Back to dairy. Naively, I thought that once I made cheese, I'd be a pro at cheese. Not so. I have made many, many rounds of cheese that was nearly inedible. Don't even ask me about the time I tried to clabber milk and then make queso with it. We do not speak of this. And yet, cheese calls to me. If we could replace this item from our grocery list, I would feel like I had conquered Everest. So into the way I go. I'd say I've mastered a fast mozzarella using Kate at Venison for Dinner's recipe. So now I have mozzarella for our Friday night sourdough pizza. I mean, you could order in, but why when we have this? Something so much easier than cheese is butter. There is an entire world of butter I invite you to explore. European, South America, and all of that. But for our sake, for our lives, I usually make either salted or un if I'm in a rush. Some people use a blender or a churn. I set and forget my mixer pretty easily. You look away for like a minute. You look away for a minute. You can actually make this so easily with just a pint of heavy cream from the store. Whatever I skim from a gallon becomes our butter for the week, and that skim milk becomes the cheese that adorns my pizza. Once the buttermilk separates, I use that in pancakes or biscuits. All the yummy things. Actual, real, butter. It was a toss-up as to whether or not we should talk about cost. 
but I know that folks will want to know if it's cheaper to keep a milk cow than it is to just go buy raw dairy at the farm. You tell me. We just did our taxes and I can confidently tell you how much it cost in 2023 alone to have a cow and whether or not it was cheaper for us to actually go to a dairy and pick up raw milk. <laughs> we'll put the details down below, but we're talking $1,100 of purchasing calves, over $1,200 for electric fencing, almost $2,300 for feed, $1,200 for hay, $900 for minerals and supplements, and $1,000 for vet bills because of pumpkin. Could we, could our family drink $9,000 <laughs> of raw milk? Um, I don't know a family that could drink <laughs> So right off of like dollar for dollar, it doesn't sound like having a family milk cow for us is really worth it. But aside from all the products that we just made, cheese and milk and butter and, and all those other things that I just described, like yogurt, we have other things that we're getting from Goldie that we don't think we could get any other way. I would be hard pressed to drink $9,000 worth of milk in a year, even with five kids. So after I stressed at that number, I asked if this cow is actually worth keeping. From the raw product of just milk, we get milk for drinking, cream for coffee, milk for lattes, cream for butter, buttermilk from making the butter, cream for ice cream, skimmed milk for mozzarella, milk for yogurt, and even more things we've never tried. Byproducts from keeping the cow include thousands of pounds of manure that become compost. We use the excess milk to feed other stock and pets, and we have a nurse cow that she helps us raise to become a beef calf, which will one day stock our freezer. In the end, I'd say the cost is at least a wash, but the one thing I haven't added to this list is the learning and lessons we get by having an animal who requires so much troubleshooting and creativity. Daily, we move her and her calf to a new spot where they trample weeds and deposit waste, and this helps sequester carbon on a desperately dry plot of land. Goldie is the queen of this place, so Bo and I duck and weave to meet her nutritional requirements to support her, because she does so much to support our family. You're just gonna have to be quick. You want me to do it? No, I just gotta hold it the right way. That's what she said. <laughs> Go that way. She's in a, she thinks. Nope. She's good. Yep, 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 she's gonna go. Okay, wind it up, baby. Wind it up, wind Oh, no, we lost Phoebe, yep. The very last thing that I made out of 18 gallons of raw milk this week is independence. I think that's something that Goldie gives us because in the last five years, what we've noticed more than anything is the vulnerability that we have in a food system. So Goldie gives us the opportunity to close that food gap, but here's the good news. You don't have to have a cow to close that food gap. You don't have to have freezers full of animals you raised. You don't even have to grow a tomato. Every Wednesday, every Saturday, in areas around you, farmer's markets are full of people who help you close your food gap and give you independence. This is one step that puts power back into your hands. You can buy seeds and you can plant in basic party cups on your windowsill and build a community right where you're at of friends who share the abundance on their patio gardens with one another and put up for a rainy day what God has given in the season of plenty. If you love the story about what we made this week from our raw milk, check out other homestead stories we have to share. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, farmers. Good job, farmers.